something and he's saying, see, this is proof that the KKK runs around the country and this is America's as bad as it was under slavery or whatever. And Bill Maher says, no, I don't think so. You know, I think actually playing left field for the Yankees is probably, I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's probably a little better than, you know, working the cotton fields. But in a way, I think I'm more on Mellencamp's side here when he says black people are not better off than they were 200 years ago, at least, let's say, 150 years ago. So it, we don't have great statistics from slavery, but after slavery, we start to get some relatively better numbers. And it's true that black people get a higher wage than they did when they didn't have a wage, but here's just one crucial statistic. Marriage rates collapsed. So there was very little legal marriage among slaves under under slavery. Tennessee actually, I think, allowed allowed marriage with between slaves. But it was very hard, obviously, because if a slave gets sold down the river, then there goes the family. The family's broken up. It's just absolutely horrific. So a- after slavery, though, you get legal marriage, and black people got married m- at much higher rates, and they got divorced at much lower rates, and they had families in a much more stable way. Today, that has collapsed. That alone means black people are not better off than they were 150 years ago. That alone, just that one statistic. And you see it among so many other areas of society, but just that one statistic would do it. See, well, they're better off because they have more money. Maybe, yeah, maybe that maybe they have more money. But money isn't everything. Money isn't money, money is fine to have. I'm not opposed to it, but it's not even the primary thing. And our society has duped itself into thinking that that's all that matters. That's that's why we've embraced globalism and liberalism and materialism is because we think that ticking up the GDP is all that matters. The liberals have thought that and the conservatives have thought that. And so we say, well, who cares if you lose your borders and your culture and your national identity and your religion? And who cares about that? We're getting more cheap crap from China and we we have more trade. And look, look at how the cost of certain goods has come down. In some cases, it's actually spiked up because inflation is going crazy because our economy is totally out of whack. But yeah, okay. Also, look at how our life expectancy has gone down because people are killing themselves and ODing on drugs. Look at how birth rates have collapsed because people aren't getting married and they are getting divorced and they are using contraception and they are killing their children through abortion and they're doing all these sorts of things that mean that we are not, we we fool ourselves in in a liberal society. We say, oh, we're so much better off because we have iPhones. We are worse off today by almost every measure than we were 100 years ago. We have better dental care, I guess. That's true. I'm not saying we're worse off in every measure. But if your society is literally dying, and if the building block of society is collapsing and has actually been defined into nothingness in recent years, you cannot say with a straight face that you're any better off than you were 100 years ago. In fact, you are much worse off. I've been doing it for nowhere, okay? 16. Okay, with your son that don't like you. And obviously that didn't sit well with Erica. She went bonkers. She got up and flipped the entire table and started screaming and referencing Spice's hospitalization and says that she should have died. Fans began sharing their outrage online immediately after the episode aired and demanded that producer Mona Scott Young fire Erica for the comment that they deemed to be colorist. You are now. Because being grounded is where the realness comes from. It's like, okay, uh uh-uh, no, we, like, you do this too, just like everybody else, and like, you know, and it's just that having that realness is probably how you implement it into your children too. It's true, and my mother, she would tell us at the height of our career, she would say, these people don't care about you. Talking about our fans. Yeah. Like, they don't really care about you. Yeah. Meaning, yes, they do care about you, but you do not put your value and your worth in them caring about you. Do you get what I'm saying? So, yes, that was our job, but she didn't want us to find our self-identity in success and in fame. Mm. Because fame and success is fleeting. That's right. How did she do that, though? She she would tell us. She would say these... She was real with us. She said, these limos are going to stop. Yeah. These... Fans are not always going to be here. So she pointed it out 
while it, while we while were on the was happening. Dancing. And we used to think our mother was like, why is she raining on our yeah. head? Why is she <laughs> I was just gonna, like, I, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Was that like, so, you know, it's funny because sometimes you're like in the moment, you're like, dang, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, why you in my moment? Like, gosh, Lee, like, yeah. for real. No. But, I mean, from a parental perspective now, you understand oh. why. I'm like, why thank God. God. Exactly. You know, so I never... I found my, of course, I'm constantly growing and evolving, mm-hmm. but, you know, as a young child, that is, you know, it's your growing pains. It's when you're trying to figure out who you are, you're trying to figure out your identity. And I just thank God that I didn't try to find that in Hollywood. Yes. yes. Cause I would have been really messed up. A lot of people who I've met who have had success as a child actor or just like early in life, if they are still in a great space now, mm-hmm. it is always because their foundation was solid. Mm-hmm. Because they come from a house where the parents cared about like how they would end up. They weren't my best friend. They, they were, were not parents. exactly. Exactly. So you're successful, you and you know, Tamara are like, I don't even know. You know what though? Interesting <laughs> enough, you were you were um, a young mom though. You were yeah. You, I mean you still are yeah. a young mom, not work. Yeah. You still are a young mom. Yeah. But you're one of my mom friends oh. with like, you know, who kind of had kids first, yeah. right? So how was that? How was your experience of like in your career, yeah. like in the midst of question. everything and now you're you're pregnant and like did your career change or shift it's or a really good question. And not even just your career, did your mentals. Yeah. You know, um how you viewed it. So in the beginning I was very scared. Mm. And I was very nervous, especially because the type of show that I was on. I was on a show called The Game. Oh, yeah. When I got pregnant. Oh, this is when you got pregnant on The Game. Mm-hmm. On The Game. And you know, Melanie Barnett was sliding down stripper oh, poles hey. and wearing, <laughs> wearing like lingerie and having all of these, you know. Melanie was for the Melanie people. Melanie was a hot mess. She was for the people. Okay, okay she, she was, was for, for the people. people. She, she was. For the people. And so I was just like, oh my gosh, how is this going to work? Um, you know, do I, again, like, the questions in my head was, do I put my career first? You know what I mean? Over, um, you know, wanting to have a family this time. And I feel like a lot of women, you know, can relate to that. Mm -hmm. Meaning, do they have to lose themselves or lose their career ambitions to become a mother? Right. But I had learned very quickly, and I'm so just proud of this epiphany, should I say, but I thank my mother for it in this sense. After having my child, I realized right away that just because I am a mom, it doesn't mean that I have to lose myself mm. and lose who I am before I was a mother. It doesn't mean that I have to lose out on my ambitions, my goals, my aspirations, all of that. If anything, I now actually have even more motivation. Right? I felt like before, yes, they were desires, but they were more of selfish desires. Now it's more also for myself, yes. I mean, also for, yes, myself, but I have even now a stronger motivation to be doing what I love to do, to be an example to my children that mommy worked hard for what she has. So, purpose. I have purpose now. Um, But that doesn't mean that I had, just because I was a mother, that I had to get rid of all of my goals and ambitions and just be a stay-at-home mom, which is okay if that's what you want to do. Whatever it is. Yeah, whatever it is.
Okay, so hopefully you guys saw those clips. Um, I put them in on purpose. I want you to get a little bit of context as to where I'm coming from here. Here's the point. Um, man, like, I think there's, like, a really big difference between therapied women. Like, if you go watch that, the rest of that podcast with Tia and Izzy, you'll see that they take a moment and talk about how Tia has a very normal relationship with her therapist. Izzy was, like, asking for recommendations because she wants to start therapy. <laughs> And then you see, like, the way that, like, Eric Mina and the other girl are are acting, like, what they're going through, really how sensitive they are about their own motherhood. Um, Then you see Michael Knowles, right, giving a very interesting talk about um, the black family. Now, Michael Knowles makes a point, which I think a lot of people just don't take into account. Like, um there will always like in america at least we will continue to like like racial groups are important and it's not just this like segregation thing it's that like for the most part people will continue to like 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 each other like the most common relationships will be like between like white people dating white people black people dating black people like intra-racial those will continue to happen that's just a normal thing But there's this, like, really, there's this weird push that's happening for, like, everyone almost to, like, hate black women. to So, like, as a society to collectively hate black women. Now, if you hate black women, what you're also saying is kind of you're going to hate the black family because there's no, there is no black family without black women. Even if you have um, a a parent who's like non-black like in Tia's case she has a parent that's non-black but she's still a black woman I mean actually like look at her she like literally looks like a black woman (laughs) so uh, the one thing that's very strange is to see so many black men kind of ignore these issues that are happening in the black community and maybe think that they will like I don't know interracial their way out of the the issues I don't the issues just fall on the next generation right it's like the next generation of black women are coming and we see like how they're dealing with it also there's a there's other um conversations to be had about just I feel like the brutality that was shown to Jocelyn Hernandez I talked about this in another video I just thought it was very strange like I mean if it like I will say it feels like Jocelyn Hernandez was already on the edge you know like there was something something was happening with her and she was just very distraught by whatever the situation was and then people kept antagonizing her so she throws something and then they arrest her and it was just like the way that they arrested her was very strange to me it felt brutal like it that would have caused me a lot of trauma that would cause actually anyone really think about it like it was like six men who arrested her and they like basically did a knee on the back sort of thing they put her in handcuffs they like drag her out um the only thing that she has at this point is she's, like, screaming these, like, racial epithets. It, the whole – it was very sad and very scary. Like, I would hope that no woman would have to go through something like that. But it's just another example of kind of the, the, the severe trauma that I feel like – I will say, like, women of color – exhibit this but um it always starts with black women like it starts with like black women having these like really derogatory experiences and then society kind of like normalizes it like oh it's okay black women can take it black women definitely cannot take it and then it like stems out to women of color and then it stems out to white women and so the reason why we have some of these like women's movements where like women are coming on and they're talking about problems that are facing communities of women because they're like they see shit happening to other women and they realize that if they don't like push back and say like this is a bad thing it's going to start it's going to be normalized for them and they don't want that shit normalized for them this is why we have to have groups that push back against kind of like the trans issue because if if trans women come for all the things that are women and then now there's no things for women that nobody ever pushed back on it uh there won't be any more like women there will just be like these like fluid dynamics which i'm i'm not even saying necessarily that that's like well 
I'm going to leave my personal actually philosophy on that out. I don't think it's useful. But that's a thing. Like, I, I think it's important to push back and really to talk. Like, I don't see other people talking about it in this way that gives grace to the women here who are, like, impacted in a way where I feel like it should be. I just wanted to give it some grace and actually, and what I mean by that is I just wanted to give it space, give space for you to see like what I see the way that I see it really so that you can like formulate your own opinion about it. Like, do you think that that, that all of these women were treated fairly? I feel like, and also like, do, do you, do you see a difference between kind of the way that like Erica Amina and the the other the blue haired woman were were talking about parenthood and the way that Tia and Izzy are talking about parenthood and even like the way that like Michael Knowles is talking about the black community as much as I think it's like wrong and I feel bad about it Michael Knowles I think is right I actually agree with him in so many ways I was I saw some people con- I made a comment on um one of Kenya's videos which was like I mean, marriage is kind of the only thing that we have right now in society that's encouraging men to, like, basically stick by their families. And other people seem to make fun of that, which I thought was, like, very weird. Like, the the sanctity of marriage is, like, a real thing. And, like, the idea of monogamy is a real thing. And I, I I don't understand. I think that there's, like, so much going on and so many things in the black community, especially amongst black males that have been normalized, like... The dehumanization of black women is a whole thing where, like, you do it to one black woman, like, they do it to Suki, right? And then people watch it and everybody, like, normalizes it and they don't understand that that's someone's daughter, that's someone's potential wife. Like, that's actually a black woman in society and all the black men are, like, making fun of her because, like, this is okay, this is okay. It isn't okay. It isn't okay. And all it's doing is, like, symbolizing to other communities, like, the worthlessness of black women who already are just extremely marginalized. It's All of it is just so strange because, like, you, I just don't hear other members of the black community talking about it. I feel like some of it has to do with respectability politics. I also saw that F, uh, FIC is going to make a video about respectability politics or something with Sexy Red and Trina. Uh, I would love to see it. I, I mean, I, I just feel like I don't even know how to talk about those women. I feel like I, there's certain parts of Trina that I just respect for just being vocal, right? Just, just like talking about her own experience. Also, like, I, it feels like I don't even know how it's like a political stance for Trina to say like I'm pretty and I can get shit because I'm pretty. Like, that was a whole, that is, like, a political stance. Is it because she's black? Like, (laughs) even though she's, like, Trina, and, like, you go look at the videos, like, Trina is, like, very attractive. I don't know what, I don't even know how there's another stance, but this is America, so clearly there's another stance even beyond that. Um, I will say, though, I, I really feel like I wonder why more people aren't talking about the, like, Jocelyn Hernandez's treatment by police and and i feel like i don't even have to talk about that in a racial sense it was just watching a woman be treated like that is scary as fuck because it opens the door for like women to get fucked up like they they'll just fuck up anybody doesn't matter who you are like they will come for you and they will kill you they're coming for your wives they're coming for your daughters like uh, to me, that's what I saw in that video. I saw another instance of just sheer unsafety for women. And I feel like I keep seeing it. And it's another reason why I continue to say, like, if you aren't, a part, if you yourself aren't taking accountability and saying, you know what, I actually see the shit that's happening in society. It's not cool. And also, if you watch those videos and you're completely numb, like everything was fine for you you didn't really feel shit, like, no emotions were triggered, you might actually be a part of the problem. That shit was traumatic as fuck. You should probably, I'm not, I mean, I'm not wishing you trauma, but, like, that probably should have traumatized you a little bit, and if it didn't, I'm a little concerned. Like, why, why is that behavior normal for you? Like, what has gone on in your life where you can see that and you can be like, it's good? 
that is not good. It's so not good. It's like the opposite of good. It's bad. It's actually really bad. So yeah. Um, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear it. I'm actually going to watch a film tonight. That's about, um, I think it's, is it Gloria Stein, Steinem? She's like a, a female activist and it's a, a little film on Amazon, uh, video about her life. I'm going to watch it. Um, I think that movie actually might probably change me in a lot of ways. Movies like that typically do. They always impact me guys. I'm probably going to go study like women's studies somewhere. <laughs> And literally just become like a women's study professor because like I, I see the issues now in a way that like I just feel like I didn't see them before. And it's really impacting me to a point where like I feel like I have to do something. Um. So, yeah.